Yeah. Hop and about. Hard. Hoo. Lower. Post. Hurry's head. their lives serving this great nation. On Veterans Day, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we give tribute to and honor those men and women who survived in the service and defense of our nation and later returned home. It is important to remember that we should not only say thank you to our service members, our veterans, and their families on Veterans Day, but on every day of the year. It was through their service to our country that we have the freedom to live, work, and pray as we wish. I am honored this morning to introduce our guest speaker. Dr. Duwa has an amazing story of his personal fight for freedom and his numerous attempts to flee his country of Vietnam in search of that freedom. The United States offered you the ability to work, attend school, and find a comforting peace. Please welcome Dr. Du Hua. Thank you. What a beautiful day. But it's also an emotional day for us too. My warrior, my Soviet men and women, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to take you back to this night. It's about 33 years ago. That night is the darkest night of my life I ever remember. I was sitting in the room with several others. We were waiting for the right time to go to the boat. I waited and waited. And suddenly I heard a loud noise from the main door was open. I stood up and looked out my room. And I immediately recognized it was what Viet Cong police. I turned to the back door and I ran out the house quickly as I could. The fear was tremendous. My breathing was so fast. My heart racing heavily, and the panic was unbelievable. I was so scared because I knew I would get shot, killed, or captured, and sent to the deep jungle for the hard labor by the communists of Vietnam. My name is Dr. Du Hua, and I'm from Vietnam. I was born in the early 60s, and I was born in the war zone. I saw the terrible killings and destruction when I was a little boy, I witnessed the brutal acts of the communists 
throughout my childhood, almost every night. I heard the sound of the machine guns and explosions. The war thrown the lives of many poor families into complete turmoil. My mother had to work so hard so our family could survive. The communists of North Vietnam have caused the killings and destruction that burn in my brain. They have no regard for peace or for the lives of the innocent people. Even though I was just a little boy, but I remember very well during the New Year holiday celebration of 1968, they took advantage of the people who were caught completely unaware and launched a massive attack to the people of South Vietnam. But the communists failed to realize that the people of the South were strong and brave. The South Vietnamese and the American armed forces stood up together and pushed back the barbaric demons. The South Vietnamese and the American armed forces decisively defeated the communists in the Tet Offensive 1968. Please let me repeat. The South Vietnamese and American armed forces they decisively defeated the communists in the Tet Offensive 1968. The hill invasion from the north. The people of the south trying to resume their normal life. However, the North Vietnam communists continue their evil ambitions to take over internationally recognized free and independent sovereign nation of South Vietnam. The war went on. My family, just like many others, continued struggling with our lives. Then came the darkest day in April 1975. The North Vietnamese Army learned a massive full-scale invasion with more than 200,000 troops that brought the collapse, the fall of Saigon, the tragic suffering disaster to the South Vietnamese people. South Vietnam had fallen into the hand of the communists. We lost our country. We lost our freedom. Consequently, the people had to accept their fates. We had to live under cruel oppression of the communists. I was a very young boy and I experienced the very hard manual labor throughout my teen years. It's quite obvious. There was no future here and I knew I had to find the way to get out. Just like millions of my desperate, frightened people who risked their lives to escape the communist oppression. I knew I wanted to follow the path the path that my brothers and sisters had been fighting for. The path of freedom. I still remember very well how our men and women fought for freedom. My Vietnam veterans, I saw you there. You have been in my village scouting and fighting the enemy. I saw you standing tall, heroically, with the South Vietnamese soldiers defending us against the communists. I saw you helping the sick and the injured Vietnamese people. I saw you protecting my village and making me and other children laugh. You brought freedom and security to my village. <laughs> you are our angel. I know you are serving and fighting, not only for your own country, but also for more than 15 million men and women and children of South Vietnam. Since you left my village, I tried to follow your path, but the path didn't come easy for me. I had tried 11 times before I could make it out to the oceans, but the danger did not stop there. Our small boat were very crowded and with desert people. We sailed for five days and nights in the deep sea with strong wind and big waves. And the tiny unworthy watercraft did not reach our destination. We were lost. Water and food were running out 
fuel almost gone and worse storms was about to come. The people in the boat knew they were facing imminent death. They began praying to God to take their soul to heaven so their bodies could sing to the deepest ocean floor. My dear friends, there are almost half of a million of poor people had lost their life through their escape in many different ways. Hundreds of thousands of people got killed escaping by foot through the jungle of Laos and Cambodia. Their desperate journeys were full of great danger and horror. Their little helpless boat were not just facing the big storm and strong waves, they were also facing the worst nightmare of the Thai pirates. The animal cruelty beast pirates drop everyone <coughs> and drag the women in front of their husbands and families and then in many cases they will kill the entire hopeless people on board. I was so fortunate. In September 1982 I finally got an airplane ticket to go to the United States of America. That was one of the happiest days of my life. I knew I was about to reach my destination, the destination of freedom. People, people like us who experience the journey of the communism know very well freedom is not free. My Vietnam veterans, thank you for showing me that you have so much humanity and kindness in your heart. And thank you. For show me what freedom is all about. I knew I was blessed and lucky to have a place to escape to. That place called the United States of America. The last stand on earth. But I came here not just to say thank you. I came to tell you in December 1987, I was very proud to become one of you. As soon as I had studied so hard and learned how to speak, read, and write English, I joined the United States Navy. My dream came true. I joined the United States Navy so that I could serve and give back my new motherland. Yes. I was standing tall with my Soviet men and women to help protect our beautiful and decent world of free enterprise and democracy. I was so proud to serve my new country on the magnificent aircraft carrier, USS America. What a beautiful name. I have gone to the most struggles to see freedom. Then I fought to protect it. I realized that people shouldn't take our present freedom for granted. I therefore wrote the book, The Escapes and My Journey to Freedoms. My very dear friends, I wrote the book through my eyes. This is the story of life and death, good and evil, hardship and fortune. But the most important thing of all, this book will tell people Freedom is not free. I would like people to understand the real faces of the communists of Vietnam. I also need to tell you the other side of the Vietnam War after the fall of Saigon. My Vietnam veterans, I saw you there. I couldn't thank you enough. More than 58,479 American lives and more than 300,000 of South Vietnamese soldiers. I pay their ultimate sacrifice. May God bless their souls. There are more than 662 American prisoners of war. In the Vietnam War, how could you ever begin to imagine what our build of you would go went through with the barbaric communists of Vietnam? The brutality of cruel, ruthless communists caused the great pain and suffering were far more beyond any description. My BOW, thank you for service and sacrifice. There are
almost left 3,000 missing action. Decades have passed, but I know the agony is still with their families. Today, I would like to thank those brave souls who ultimate sacrifice and make the world a better place for all humanity. To all Vietnam veterans and families, thank you. My dear Vietnam veterans, you will enter the call of our President Kennedy, who said, ask not what your country do for you, ask what you can do for your country. These men and women were willing to sign up in the offices and delay their personal dreams. You have sold your country first and enjoy this noble cause. Our Vietnam veterans were the men and women of their times. You gave your energy, your faith, your de devotion to these endeavors. Freedom for all. And you recognize and fight this freedom for this noble cause in spite of these great dangers. My Vietnam veterans, the United States never lost a single battle during the war. My Vietnam veterans, the United States military never lose Vietnam. The United States military left Vietnam on the order of its politicians. The conquest of the South Vietnam by the North turned the country into a nightmare for our people. The darkest day of history resulted from the fall of Saigon. The two horrific images of the fall were far beyond words. Millions of innocents trying to flee their homelands and die by hundreds of thousands in many different ways. I myself was a young boy as I escaped 11 times. The wounds and sufferings are inside of me until this day. President Ronald Reagan said, ending a conflict is not so simple. Calling it off and coming home because the price of this kind of peace could be a thousand years of darkness for generation Vietnam born. It's so true. The whole country of Vietnam has been in darkness. The entire country of Vietnam now in agonies. What kind of peace is without freedoms? Peace, freedom, and liberty need to work together. Once our president, Thomas Jefferson said, when the people fear the government, there is tyrannies. When the government fear the people, there is liberty. The fears of the people for the Vietnam communist regime is tremendous in the last several decades. My Vietnam veterans, thank you so much what you did for us. Believe, be proud, and step up and serve your country in fighting more than 15 men and women and children of South Vietnam. My Vietnam veterans, thank you for letting me have the opportunity to speak with you today. But this is not just my voice. This is the voice of the entire people of South Vietnam. You are our heroes. Please accept this grateful word from our heart and soul. Thank you so much for your service and sacrifice in fighting for moral and noble cause on our behalf. May God bless you. Thank you and welcome home. Thank you and welcome home. Thank you and welcome home. Thank you and welcome home.